Hello everyone and welcome to another demonstration. Today I'm going to be showing the Ansible Automation platform provisioning machines out in the Azure cloud, in particular Windows, because Linux is actually really easy to do. Um, and after it provisions the machine, we're going to connect in and do some post provisioning, right? So in this case, it's going to be hardening and then scanning, but again, art of the possible, anything you can imagine can be completed. So really, I'm going to start at the start. I've already got all of this good stuff in my uh, Ansible Automation platform in my controller here. So I'm going to pop into the template section. I'm going to find my workflow and yes, I am doing it based off of a workflow. I'm going to fire it off and then we'll talk about it. So first I'm going to launch it with my little rocket ship here. It's going to pop up. So I added a survey to this workflow, which a survey is really just the ability to gain additional information from the user at runtime. It makes it a little bit easier. So I could hard code all this information in my playbooks and then fire them off, but then I would have to go and modify them every single time. And in this instance, it just pops up and asks me. So I can prevent it, uh, rather provision a Linux or a Windows machine here, it's choosable. Uh, in this instance, I'm doing combo boxes and really I recommend combo boxes as much as possible to uh, prevent user error. I'll make this one CZ machine 22, just something unique. Click next and I'm going to launch. So now it's going to jump me into the job section for this particular uh, workflow. And as I can see, here is how it's built out. So it is uh, initially starting at the Azure VM deploy and then it will um, split and it will do hardening for Windows or Linux. And inside of these individual job templates, it's checking for, hey, is this a Windows machine or is this a Linux machine? And it will do accordingly. And then they're gonna converge back and do a scan. So while this is running, we will take a little bit of a look at this workflow template itself. So I'm gonna pop into the workflow template. I am going to pop into the workflow visualizer. Here I can see how um, workflows are built. These are individual job templates inside of my system, right? So I have the Azure VM deploy. I have the Windows hardening, Linux hardening VM deploy. These are really easy to manipulate. If I wanted to add an additional uh, point that it would go off to, I hit the plus. And then over here, I can choose an additional job template and on success or on failure, right? So if this uh, VM deploy failed, I could actually do a failure and then select it. And so that if this failed for some reason, it would go this direction. Right now it's on success. It's going these directions. You can see that they can split, diverge, turn into branching trees. So it gives you a lot of power and flexibility when you're deploying these things. So instead of just having one big playbook that rule them all, I can have all these small individual ones that I can start treating like Lego bricks. So I can uh, detach the windows hardening here. I can unsnap it and I can snap it into a different workflow. So it makes it very modular and easy to reuse all this infrastructure. So I'm going to exit without making any adjustments there. But while that runs, I'll jump into my GitHub repository. And as always, this is public. So Azure VM, this is actually the interesting one where all the magic happens. So initially I'm setting up um, some variables, right? And right here I'm setting up VM password and VM username. These are important ones. And as you can see, I'm actually um, injecting these as additional variables. So I have a custom credential inside of my Ansible tower that allows me to specify any series of informations save them as a custom credential inside of tower and then inject them into playbooks either as uh, as i'm doing here as extra variables or i can send them as environment variables but the important part is i can specify that gen 1 password is a password so it's private information so please keep that private so those are going to get injected all of these are existing azure configurations i have for the um, region, uh, virtual network, security groups, have no name, all that good stuff. It's already in my infrastructure and created, but um, you'll notice that my first tasks here are uh, creating all of that same infrastructure again. Now, this is all created item potently, which means if it exists in the current form, it won't make an adjustment, right? But uh, I can rerun this over and over, it'll be fine but it takes a little bit of extra time to do those procedures. So what I did is I added some tags here. One is never and one is setup. So if I do want to run this, I can add the setup tag to my playbooks and it will go ahead and complete the setup portion. Now this never tag is a special one that says, 
don't run this. So if I just normally run a playbook, no matter what the tags are, if I run it sans tags, it'll run everything. But if I add the never tag, that means it won't run this. So in general, by default, I don't want to run it. So I'd leave that off. So let's get down to the interesting bits. Once it's created the infrastructure for Azure and a lot of this I've already hashed over in my um, existing blog post on the uh, what was it uh, provisioning VMs in Azure based on satellite right so satellite can actually order and provision all those machines so a lot of this has already been hashed out there so I'm not gonna go over all of it again where it starts getting unique is I create a virtual network interface um, based on the name of this individual VM, right? So we're doing VM name underscore Nick. So this is where it actually gets kind of customized. So uh, the virtual um, the virtual machine that gets created has the unique VM name as well as its VM Nick and its storage, right? So all those are associated with that one VM. It keeps it easy to understand what pieces go with what devices. Now, once I've done that, I can choose to uh, create a Linux VM. So it's going to do a little conditional check here. If I set the OS type to Windows, or rather I didn't, right? Uh, exclamation point equals means not. If it's not Windows, then it's going to be Linux and it's going to uh, provision this Linux VM, which is great, but I'm not doing that in my instance. I am doing a Windows provision. And so here I have a block, which is uh, gives you the ability to group a bunch of specific objects together, right? So in this block, I've got all of these different tasks um, that all run within this one block. And I have a conditional on said block right here that's checking for Windows. If it is Windows, it'll run these. So in this instance, it does. So one thing I found kind of unique was whenever you're provisioning a Windows machine, you have to tell it OS underscore type Windows. It defaults to Linux, which I thought was funny because, you know, Azure is Microsoft, so you would think they would default to Windows, but most people are provisioning Linux boxes, so they leave the uh, OS type default to Linux. That's why we didn't have to specify it in the Linux. I'm also setting some open ports, so we'll open those in the firewall, and then I'm specifying, go ahead and create a 2019 data center uh, server. Right, so it's gonna spin that VM up. The next thing it does in the block, which is extremely important, right here is it is going to configure WinRM. So by default on this Linux VM, WinRM is not set up and ready to go. And so it's using this special module called Virtual Machine Extension. So it connects to Azure and says, hey, run this custom script over on this virtual machine. So it will tell it to download this custom PowerShell script and then execute said PowerShell script, which will set up all the WinRM stuff. Also I have a WinRM tag on here. So if I've got an existing machine and I just want to have WinRM run on it, I can specify that tag and it'll complete that action. But the very last thing it does is uh, using the VM NIC we created, it actually, whenever you create that, it logs what the private IP address is that was created on that VM NIC and I'm just adding that virtual machine to uh, my inventory. Again, that inventory was specified up in the variable section, but it's going to create a variable of Ansible underscore host with its private IP address. So I have a VPN tunnel that connects my infrastructure to Azure so that I can connect to these private IP addresses. So none of my uh, lab Azure stuff is actually uh, visible to the internet. It all has to go through that uh, that internet, uh, that VPN tunnel to keep it all secure. So once that's done in the workflow, it's gonna move on to the hardening sections. And I bet if I jump back over to my job templates, it's probably completed by now. It has indeed. So I can jump into the original workflow here and I can see uh, that each one of these completed successfully, right? They're all green. I can click details on any individual one. So for example, I'll click on this Azure VM and I can see all the various pieces that completed in here. So create Windows VM. I'm going to click on this. Now I'm going to expand it just a little bit so that it's easier to see. And oftentimes it will warn that no log uh, wasn't specified because it knows there's a private uh, password that's generally associated with these. And I'm going to scroll down until I find it. Admin password right here. So I'm setting the username as Ansible. And the admin password says value specified and no log parameter. That means it's going to be obfuscated here for us. And that is because in the custom credential, I told it was a password, which tells it, oh, this is sensitive information. So whenever it's used in a play, 
don't show it, right? So now I can still display all this information securely without having to worry about the password hitting plain text anywhere. So it went ahead and provisioned and then added it to my um, inventory. And let's jump back over to the job section. Next, it would have went over to the Windows Harden and it uh, connects in and I'm not really doing any hardening. Here is where you're probably going to want to call in a various set of tasks, right? So generally I would keep these things in separate task files um, and then I would call them from said playbook. Um, that way it could be say your password hardening, right? You can keep that in a little section and then your network hardening, keep that in a little section. And so you'd probably in your password want to set, you know, uh, length and complexity requirements have them apply to the server, whatever it happens to be. In my instance, I'm just using the Windshell module to connect in and tell it to issue something via WinRM, right? So I am just verifying that I can throw commands at this thing. So first thing I do is I just connect in and I do a quick ping on itself. And then here you see I'm doing import task one and then you would do import task two, three, four, whatever it happens to be to get all that hardening completed. Once that's done, in my workflow, if you will recall. So we went up here to Windows Hardening, that completed, and now I'm gonna do the system scan here. It's really just spitting out a debug message that says, hey, scan the machine and generate reports, because that's where you'd wanna layer that on. But again, right, this isn't exactly how everybody would do it in their infrastructure. I'm sure you would have tweaks and tunes and modifications in various ways. Um, so I'd be really curious how you perform these actions. I should be able to pop in to my Azure deployment and now I can see ZZ Machine 22 as well as its associated storage and VM NIC right here pop up in the list. So it did the provisioning and then it added it to my inventory and then I did post processing for hardening and scanning. So anything is available here after it does all of that i could say oh this is also a web server and it would install IIS, or i could say it should be running this application and it can do the post configuration on those as well so you can see how this technique allows you to easily layer in additional things if you guys have any questions or comments please drop them below if you see how you would manipulate this in some various ways for your specific environment i'd really be curious to hear you about it so thank you for your time and we'll see you again really soon